The next convergence test is called the root test, and it looks very similar to the ratio test. In fact, it turns out that the ratio test and the root test are closely linked, and you can generally do anything you can do with the root test with the ratio test and vice versa, although the details might be more complicated. So because of that, we're not going to do the root test very often, other than very specific examples where we have something raised to the power of k, something complicated raised to the power of k that we want to simplify. And the root test starts by taking the kth root. So you take the root with the k power of your series expression. And then we take the limit of that result as k goes to infinity. So we start kind of in the same way as the ratio test by defining this value of p. And then the conclusions for the root test are the same form as the conclusions for the ratio test. If that limit, that answer comes out less than one, the series converges. If it comes out greater than one, the series diverges. And if it comes out to equal one, then the test is inconclusive and we need to try something else. So I'll show you one example here. And this really just applies when you have some expression like this raised to the power of k because then p starts by taking away that power and we just wind up with the limit of one over ln of k with the absolute value. And that is pretty simple because as k goes to infinity, ln of k goes to infinity as well. So one over ln of k goes to zero, which of course is less than one. And that tells us that this series converges. So the root test, when it applies, is pretty simple. As long as you know how to do the ratio test, it's the same kind of conclusions. So it's relatively simple. And again, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this one or doing a lot of examples with it because it doesn't apply very broadly, but it does fit in the pattern of the ratio test.